Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Paul here. I finally decided to try out some of these IBC totes for myself for some firewood. I have a little bit of a plan with these. Obviously I've got to take out the bladder and all that kind of stuff to make it ready to put firewood in, but I want to use them a little bit for myself to move firewood around and that way, you know, I don't have to move it as much by hand. And what I've been doing here recently is having to take firewood from my stockpile and then move it to my woodshed. And instead of moving it by the bucket loads on the tractor, you know, like taking the time to stack it up in the tractor and then move it down to the shed and then having to take it out of the bucket and restack it underneath the shed, I thought I'd try to pull it from the stockpile, stack it up in the IBC totes, and then just bring the IBC totes and set it down underneath my shed. Now, I probably will not be able to store nearly as much firewood this way, but for right now, I'm kind of pressed on time, so I'm trying to save a little bit of time and put a fair quantity of firewood underneath my shed so it doesn't get rain and snow on it and all that kind of stuff. So instead of having to handle that two or three times, then I'm going to handle it as it comes from the stockpile or from the splitter, fill up my IBC tote, and then move the entire tote down to my woodshed. I plan on trying to sell some firewood later, and I thought that this would actually be a good way to do that also. I've seen some other people, they do that, and I think maybe they charge a deposit or something like that for the tote, and then whenever they return the tote, they get their deposit back, or they can just trade it out for another one and just kind of keep the cycle going on. So I thought that was a pretty good idea, and you know, I thought that as I go into selling a little bit of firewood, that that would be a good plan to work out for me too. The biggest problem I have though right now is that these things are expensive in my area. You can find them, you know, you can look on Facebook and all that kind of stuff, and you'll see them listed everywhere, but everybody wants a pretty outrageous price for them. I've seen them anywhere from $50 up to $100, which is just crazy for these things. I did find them relatively inexpensive. I think they were about $35 per container, but they were two and a half hours away. But anyways, what we're going to do as we go with them, we're going to kind of just buy one here and there when we can and eventually kind of just get stocked up on them. That way we don't have too big of a, an initial investment in IBC totes. Plus, you know, it's probably still going to be a little while before I really get into selling firewood. It'd probably be at least a year from now. But these totes are 275 gallons. And in order to get, say, like a full one third of a cord in these totes, I'm going to have to stack it up a little bit above the top of the tote. So we're going to cut the opening in the wide side of the tote and that's because I actually cut my firewood 18 inches. So 18 times 2 is 36. This tote is right about 37, 38. So that'll actually make it to where I can put two perfect rows in here and fill up from side to side and not have to worry about having empty space. So if I actually done it from the other way and put rows side to side that way, I would end up having a space about 6 or 8 inches on one end of it that I'd have to kind of fit pieces down into and, and get it to take up that space to make the cubic footage come out correctly. So, like I say, we're going to cut it from this side. It'll make two perfect rows in there. I can stack them up actually about 45, 46 inches, and it'll actually make a perfect one-third of a cord that way. One thing you want to do too when you cut these off is kind of go back through and smooth out those edges and make sure there's no rough burrs on there because that stuff can get you especially if you lean in there i mean shoot it could just even grab your shirt sleeve or whatever but if you nick your hand on it or something that metal 
is man that stuff's sharp after you cut that off so just go through and just kind of grind off those sharp edges so let's take this thing over and fill it up with firewood and see how it works out <laughs> That actually worked out pretty good. I've actually got right at a third of a cord right here. Some people call that a face cord or a rick or whatever, but it's a third of a cord, which is like 42 cubic feet. I definitely see me trying to get some more of these here in the near future. Not only can I fill these from my stockpile, but I can also fill them and I can move them to a stack location for them to dry and season out in measured amounts. And that's, that's ultimately what I want to do is have it measured out so that whenever I sell it, we know how much we're selling. We know how much to charge for it by the quantity that's there. Plus, these don't have to be in a perfectly flat area to be able to set down. And around here, there's not a whole lot of flat ground at all. So I can take them out on the edge of the yard where the yard starts to slope a little bit. This thing's not going to move and fall over or anything like that. I'm looking forward to being able to do that. But for now, I've got another one to cut up and make into a firewood tote and get filled up because I really like the way that this is working out. So if you enjoyed today's video, make sure you give it a big thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, keep track of everything that's going on around the property, and thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.